Right. Hi, Ryan. I'm Josh. Hi, Josh. Nice I'd like to, to ask you a, a few questions about Ryan Wood Limited. Yeah. I'd like to dive in about what makes your company successful. And uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, so what inspires you to wake up in the morning and, and start working? Well, um, I, f I think I... The, the idea of having to wake up every morning, um, try, uh, obviously I've got projects running, so waking up knowing that we're going to take things another step further, I think that uh, that is my main drive um, to, to really fulfil uh, targets and goals. And um, I think another, uh, another um, thing is the guys I have working for me, I've got a really great bunch of guys, very well, very well mannered, good skills, really good company. I think we uh, we all really enjoy each other's company, so I think um, uh, just just that uh, that framework there gives yeah. me uh, gives me it inspires me every day to wake up and be happy to get up and okay. go to work. Speaking about your team, do you have a favourite team member? No, I can't <laughs> say that. Um, he might be watching, <laughs> but I think um, I think. Uh, uh, I think I, I, I cherish them all quite. Uh, they, all, they all really work hard for me. Yeah. They all um, work, work for each other more okay. than anything. We're a very good, strong team unit. Okay, and diving back into your team, uh, what do you, when hiring someone, what do you consider? What do you take into account? I think um, I like to, I look, to look at a few factors. One is I love, uh, I lo I love people that uh, have really good methods of work. So. Um, I, I give people trials so I can see what okay. they see what they're capable of. And uh, a couple of guys have come in, been a bit messy, and it turns me away. But I, I, don't, I t tend not to judge people too quickly. But a good indicator for me will be uh, someone that uh, sets their tools up very neatly, is running cables safely, works yeah. in a really good manner, um, and uh, uh, that that's a good indicator of someone with a higher level of skill, very organised. Yeah. Uh, to be skillful, we don't necessarily have to be perfectly organised, but I think it's a good indicator. Okay. So uh, that's uh, I suppose that's one of uh, one of the areas which I like to focus on. One another important thing is manners. Um, yes. I think people or mannerisms. Uh, people need to be very respectful. That's really important. I like everyone to treat each other with respect. Um, positive. It's good to have people positive. I like my team members who are yeah. part of my team to be positive. Obviously, uh, it's not crucial because I do understand people don't all come from all uh, great backgrounds, have a positive attitude, but I believe uh, that, that's down to me. I think uh, as a, a team leader, uh, it's up to me to bring the team up, make everyone feel good, good mood, make sure everyone's treating each other yeah. well, the neighbours well, everyone. Uh, it, it collaborates to create a team effort. Yeah, and it's good to keep the whole positive mental attitude. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't matter who they are. So long as you treat people well yeah. and you look after them, you can bring anyone up. You can put enthusiasm into people. And I think I like to consider myself as someone who can put a bit of light into someone who maybe is in a bit of darkness. And I think uh, in this current climate with uh, uh, the unfortunate um, issue with uh, high suicide rates in men, uh, I think I saw a video not long ago which um, showed the importance of, uh, of really focusing on the little indicators which identify areas where someone may be suffering. And I think it's really important that we all look out to try and focus on those things and try yeah. and bring people up and work together as, as a unit, as one, as one team, no one higher than the other. That's true. And uh, when you uh, sort of give someone a, a trial, as you said, jumping mm -hmm. back to the team, um, if someone isn't doing well, what what can you do to uh, boost their confidence? There, there's always uh, there's always a limit to, uh, to what uh, we can accept at Ryan Webb Construction because we do have very high standards. But if I see that there's potential in someone, uh, I I will I will try and give them encouraging words, like make them feel part of the team by. You know, like maybe bringing them with us on uh, all of us go to lunch together, bringing them with them, buying their lunch, yeah. for instance, making them feel welcome because that could be a really big, that could be really, uh, that could really change someone's attitude entirely. Yeah, sort of keeping them involved with the team, if you will. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Make them feel welcome. I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, could you imagine yourself working any differently? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course I can. Um, I think anyone that uh, can't see that is not really looking to strive to improve. 
Uh, I I think someone's asked me a similar question like that before. Um, I think um, without um, without improvement, I think no one's ever going to progress. Obviously, without trying to push yourself in that direction, I don't think anyone's going to be able to uh, better themselves. And we're all about that. We we love that. We really want. Uh, I, I, I push people all the time, I make them question themselves, I, I make them think about the way they work and we all try and uh, push each other as well. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah. And that corresponds with the good mental attitude. That's that right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, speaking about striving to do a better job, have you ever not completed a job? Um, <laughs> no, I've never not completed a job, ever. I think. Um, there's been times where I've not wanted to finish a job, <laughs> um, but I think everyone comes across that. Um, I've always had this dedicated mindset. I'm I'm not the person that gives up easily. I I try to keep going. I try to keep working, and sometimes that perseverance you push through, and you realise the problem wasn't as big as you thought it was. Yeah. I okay. Uh, do you have a favourite tool? If so, yeah. why? <laughs> um, it all depends on uh, the spectrum which you're looking at it, I suppose. I, If you're looking at site tools, I definitely have a favourite. Um, I love uh, using routers, obviously with Carpenter Joy in a background. Um, we, uh, The application of it is it's just phenomenal. You, you, <laughs> there's so many different ways you can apply it to your working. Uh, where you work in life, you can get different types of jigs, templates, different types of router bits, mouldings. You can use it in all types of different ways for cutting, shaping, and it's so versatile. It's probably my most favourite tool. Do you ever work by hand? Carving, yeah. like carving, yes, we have. We do uh, on many occasions. A lot of being a carpenter, a joiner from the start of earlier parts of my career. A lot of it is skill. A lot of it is skill. Um, everything. I wouldn't go as far as saying we're carving owls <laughs> or um, dragons, for instance, because there's some guys out there can do some amazing stuff. But when it comes to the conventional builds and stuff, we do definitely uh, use a lot of hand tools. Okay. Speaking about your uh, learning, where did you where did you learn carpentry? Well, um, going way back now. Um, 13, no, no, 14 years ago, 14, 15 years ago, we start. I started in uh, college. I done car, uh, uh, carpentry and joinery. Okay. Uh, I, I gained a level two MVQ in that, and uh, I took it on from there. I started with a company based out of Ingatestone. Really good company. Very high spec work, doing work all around hut and mount and areas like that. Doing really big projects. Really nice bespoke projects I learned a lot of my time there one of the guys um, he he taught me a lot he probably doesn't know how much he taught me but uh, <laughs> let's hope he's watching and he appreciates it <laughs> but he's uh, he was a really good guy really nice he believed in me and uh, he helped give belief in myself and uh, he taught me a lot of a lot of stuff going through my career I went on my own yeah I learned a hell of a lot more about myself I think um, when I went on my own, I learned more about myself than I did of than the job, and I think that was quite important to uh, taking things further. Okay. And then um, from there, I uh, I just I got another job working for another company and another job. I've moved around a little bit, learning a little bit from here here and there, and I've become a foreman at a company locally in Chelmsford area. And um, there, I was given. The opportunity to become a foreman slash project manager. I got involved with a lot of uh, uh, the organising of uh, the material side and uh, the time in, in which trades come in. And I think over the three and a half years I worked there, I developed uh, a very good skill, a very good knack for uh, the management of uh, projects. Okay. And um, yeah, and then here I am now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, you worked lower in the ranks, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, did your foreman ever treat you badly, or how, how would you say he treated you? Well, I, I've had, uh, I, like I said, I, I'm a humble guy, and I don't want to start talking about um, how people have treated me, but I have been treated poorly in the past, and um, it has definitely taught me a lot, and uh, how it, it's taught me how I should manage people, how people like how people would like to be treated but myself being yeah. one of those people uh, in the past 
and I think um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's taught me a lot. Yes, yeah, yeah. so you do believe it's influenced you and how it you has. Your yeah, now. yeah. My personal experience uh, is always uh, is always influencing me about the way I approach people, okay. jobs, life in general. Yeah. Uh, when working on a project, what problems have you faced and had to overcome? Uh, tough question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, you come across problems all the time. This is um, in the building industry, uh, circling around um, the way in which uh, things have previously been built. Uh, you, you come across all sorts of problems. Uh, I think that's a question I'll struggle to answer. Okay. Um, we'll be here all, all night, <laughs> unfortunately. But you, back in a uh, particular uh, incident on uh, one of my jobs, we call it an incident, I suppose. But um, we've had to uh, redivert a lot of the wastes because the way we've got the new uh, brickwork coming in, uh, coming up, it's all it's all going to be cause problems with the height of our okay. roof. So we have to redivert it back in the house and down through a utility. I think that. Um, Problems like that, you come across continuously poor electrics in the uh, existing building, poor structural work, um, poor carpentry work, uh, all sorts of problems you come across every single day. But it's not the not problem you come across, it's the way you deal with it okay. that matters. Yeah. And uh, when working with a client, how much of the, uh, the work is client's work or client's input? Even. That's another question that depends, I suppose. Um, clients uh, sometimes come to me with plans already drawn up. Okay. Uh, they have uh, have a very a very strong opinion about the way they want things done. But I'm quite I'm very passionate about what I do. I have ideas. I'm always coming up with ideas, and I think from that stage where I meet the client, I'd say we collaborate on at least fifty percent okay. each. Yeah, and that leaves your client very happy. Yeah, it takes a weight off their shoulder. It's good to have input from other people, yeah. people that have seen how things have been done before. I think um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of clients have benefited from the way in which I've collaborated with them, with designs, and just the, the overall running of the jobs, basically. Brilliant. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks for having me.